In this CSS tutorial, we'll be going over the parameters for creating radial gradient and repeating radial gradient backgrounds for HTML elements. We'll start again with the bare bones of an HTML5 web document. And in my head element, I'm going to start a style element. I'll make its type text CSS. Make sure I go down a couple of lines and close that style element. And just like in our linear gradient tutorial, we're going to add nine div elements to the body. And they each have a different class, gradient 1 through gradient 9. Now let's quickly add a CSS rule that's going to affect all nine of these divs by targeting the div element in CSS. So this will style up these divs in this manner. It'll make them float left, have a width of 32% across the screen. That way three boxes will fit in the browser window no matter how wide the browser window is. Each box will have a height of 125 pixels, margin of 4 pixels, the font color will be white and the font size will be 30 pixels and the background for each of those boxes will be a light gray until we give them a gradient background. So what we can do is just collapse that and get it out of the way. Okay, on the next line down, you can place this comment in for yourself. You place the radial gradient syntax, and then as a reminder to yourself, you can place these parameters in this order. Position, shape or size, and then color stops. That's where you put all of your colors and your stops separated by comma. And in front of all your colors, you put the shape and your size. And if you want to specify a position, that goes before your shape and size. So it goes position, shape or size, and color stops. That's the easiest way to think about it, I think. And there's also some keywords that we'll be talking about for position that we're not going to be using until the radial gradient syntax is standardized in all browsers. While we're using the prefixes, we're not going to use any of those keywords, but we can just use numbers and the bottom left, top right, and all of those keywords to put the gradient to start the gradient where we need it to be. Now let's target this first box, gradient 1. We'll type in div dot to signify that it's a class. Gradient 1, open curly brace, close curly brace. And we'll designate the background property. And this is where you would put your radial gradient syntax right there. And then put semicolon. Now let's just remove those things in between the parentheses. And let's talk about the prefixes for all the different browsers. Since I'm going to be testing in Google Chrome, I'm going to use the WebKit prefix, which is also the prefix that you use for Safari. If you're testing in Internet Explorer, you put MS here. If you're testing in Opera, you put O there. And if you're testing in Mozilla Firefox, you put Mose. And then after we get done with our examples, we're going to add all of the prefixes so it works in all browsers. But pretty soon, like we mentioned in the other video, you're going to be able to use radial gradient syntax like this without any of the prefixes. And some browsers will render this just like it is like that, but I'd recommend that you use the prefixes for just a little while longer. That way you can be sure it works in all of the browsers. Okay, so let's get our WebKit prefix back. And in the parameters, in between the parentheses, we're going to add our parameters. And we're just going to have two colors just show a very basic radial gradient. So let's type in magenta or whatever color you want to type in. You can put pink and blue, whatever, and black. All right, let's take a look at what this renders in the browser we're testing in. So in box one, we get a radial gradient that goes from magenta to black. And the reason why I made these boxes stretchy is I wanted to show you guys some things that uh, the shape of your box will determine whether or not your gradient will be elliptic or circular. And you can also designate it, force it to be circular and I'll talk about that in a second. So even if it's this shape, even if your box is this shape, it'll be circular if you set it to be that way. But if your box is a square, even with this setting, it will be circular. Now let's talk about these colors real quick. Magenta, just like the linear gradients, you can use the hexadecimal colors and even the same for black, you can use hexadecimal colors. You can also use RGB, HSL, or RGBA, or HSLA. So you can use colors by name like magenta, or you can use its hexadecimal value, or you can use its RGB value, or you can use its HSL value. Now one of you guys asked me a question on YouTube about the colors and alpha transparency settings. You can also use the word transparent here to make it a full transparent color. So that's what that looks like. And if we refresh our browser view, we see that we get a transparent color there. But maybe you don't want that full transparent. Maybe you want it only half transparent. 
50% transparency. Okay, here we are at YouTube for the last video that I put up for the linear gradients, and this is the question that one of you guys asked. It's from user, please stay tuned. They wrote, very cool, can you use alpha values in place of the transparent or opaque? And this is the question that I want to answer here. Yes, you can use RGBA or HSLA colors. Now, HSL colors are new in CSS3, I believe. RGBA or RGB colors have always been around. You can use red, green, blue color values to get any color you want. And you can also put a fourth parameter, that's the A. That stands for the alpha setting of the color. So you can set it to have half transparency if you want, or any transparency setting that you want. You can make it just slightly transparent, or almost all the way transparent, or 50%. So you can use HSL A or RGB A color values to get the alpha setting, if you don't want to use the transparent keyword to make it fully opaque. Now let's copy this whole CSS rule and we'll add another one for gradient box 2. I'm just going to go back to my name colors and I'm going to add another color after magenta and in between black, turquoise. And make sure I separate all of my colors by comma. Let me make sure I spell turquoise correctly or I won't get any results. Check that in the browser. Now I can add another color in there if I want. Put yellow. And what will happen is each color will take up a relatively even amount of space. Alright, so I'm just going to keep it simple with the three colors. Now we'll talk about setting the shape. So let's grab that one and we'll make a new rule for gradient 3. And right in the front we're going to put the keyword circle. And by default, if you don't designate it to be a circle, it will be elliptic if your shape allows it to be. But if you put the circle keyword in the front for specifying the shape, then it will force it to be a circle. Render that in browser. So you can see in box 2, it's not using the circle keyword, and that is elliptic. Box 3, no matter the size of the box, it remains circular. And you also notice how the gradient grows the wider the box gets. All right, now let's talk about some positioning. And that would go in front of your shape, where you specify your shape or size. That's where you put your positioning, is right in front. So let's copy that rule and make another one called gradient 4. And this one, right before we specify circle, we're going to specify the position. And I'll make it start from the bottom. So I can just put the bottom keyword. Render that. Now you can see that my gradient begins at the very bottom edge and then spreads out from there. All right, now let's take this one, make another one for gradient 5, and let's talk about placing it into corners. So let's say I want it to be bottom left corner. Render that. Now my gradient starts in the bottom left corner. And you can also use top right or top left, bottom right, bottom left. But there might be a time where you don't want it to be exactly in the corner. Maybe you want this gradient to start anywhere in the box that you want it to start. And that's where we can use positioning by pixel or percentage instead of using these top, right, bottom, left keywords. Okay, now I'm going to show you a different way to affect the shape or size and the positioning. So let's copy this rule, gradient 5, and let's make a gradient 6 rule. Now let's remove top right and let's target the center by saying 50%, space 50%. And instead of using the circle for shape, we're going to use numbers for size. And that will also allow you to get a circle or an ellipse if you want. So for example sake, I'm just going to make it 100 pixels by 100 pixels. Now let's render that into gradient box 6. Now let's take those numbers for the sizing. You see how we have it sized at 100? Let's make that half of what it is and then refresh the page. Keep your eye on box 6. You see? The whole gradient got a lot smaller. Now what if we make that 200? Width and height. Refresh our page, and it's a nice big gradient. Now that forces it to be a circle. So instead of having the word circle there, I can just put the exact numbers that I want, and if those numbers match, it will be a perfect circle. But if I make this one a 100 and this one only 50, I will get an ellipse or oval shape. You see? I get an oval shape because the height 
is only set to 50. Now if I change that to 20, it'll be an even more dramatic change. See? Very skinny. But I'll just leave that one on 100 pixels and 100 pixels. So now you know this is the width and height of the gradient, and this is its positioning. So 50%, 50% puts it directly in the center. Now what if I change that 50, the first 50, to a 0? And that would be my x coordinate, my horizontal plane. So watch what happens to where this thing is resting when I refresh. You see? On my horizontal plane, this way, I just set it to 0, so it snapped to this edge. If I set it to maybe 10%, save this, and then refresh this page, you'll see it come off of that edge ever so slightly into the box a little more. Refresh. You see? So that lets you put it anywhere that you want it in that box using these two numbers. And you can use percentages, or you can use pixels here if you want. If I want it to be 50 pixels X position, and then a 100 pixel Y position, I can do that. Refresh the page. So now it's sitting 50 in this way, and 100 in this way. So you get 100 and the 50. 50 X, 100 Y. So if you wanted to have this being a moon sitting up here somewhere, that'd be very easy to accomplish. I would just want to put it X maybe 70% and then Y of maybe 20. So let me try that. So I have 70 and 20. Refresh my page. And see, now it's up here in the corner like it would be a moon in a scene. That shows you how to position it anywhere you want it. And there's also some keywords like farthest corner that will allow you to position it as well. But you can use these numbers and these keywords will allow you to get any configuration that you need. You can either use ellipse here or circle keyword to specify the shape. Or you can specify the shape by direct sizing with numbers. So you have a lot of different choices. They give you a lot of different choices. Okay, now let's talk about placing color stops. And for this one, I'm just going to copy the rule for gradient 3. I'm going to go under gradient 6 and make this one say gradient 7 because this one's pretty much set up the way we want. And we're just going to go into the colors and we're going to add stops. Now I can use percentages or pixels here. You can also use EM when you're using numbers. You can use EM values, pixels, or percentages. So I'll say magenta 40 pixels. The turquoise will make 74 pixels. And the black will give a stop at 80 pixels. So now let's check out box 7. Render that in the browser. So you can see that allows you to specify how big the radial is going to be and how tight it's going to be next to its neighboring color. So basically, if I wanted to make this a very hard line, I can just match those two numbers where the black meets the turquoise. For instance, if I just make the turquoise match that 80 and refresh that, and now you can see I have a very hard line because I match those. Now what if I want to make the same effect happen to the magenta where it meets the turquoise? I can just add another turquoise right here. Watch. Turquoise. And make this one go 40 to match the stop for the magenta. Now if I refresh the page, we should see that our magenta where it meets the turquoise is also another hard line. See? So you have two hard lines now because you're making your color stops meet exactly so it makes a hard line. If you want to soften these up, you just spread your colors out a little. Let's make this one 60. So let's make the black something like 96, and then the turquoise will make close to that something like 88. Now let's render that. Refresh. So you can see those settings allow your magenta to dominate a little bit more, and you can see the range is from 40 to 88. And then the space where your turquoise meets your black is very narrow and you can spread that out a little more if you just spread your black maybe put it at 120 for the black you'll see it spread out a little more to where it's not so tight there refresh see Ta -da! so that allows you to make the colors within the gradients stop anywhere you want now we'll quickly discuss creating repeating radial gradients and then we'll be done so let's just copy rule number seven and let's create gradient eight now for this one we'll remove the shape on the front there and in front of the word radial we're gonna put repeating hyphen 
radial gradient. Let's use percentages for this one. Let's set this one for 70%. Magenta, turquoise, 80%. And then the black will go 90%. And you have to use the color stops in there to have the repeating radial gradient occur. And when you're using repeating radial gradients, you want to start with a certain color and make sure you end with that color or you'll get a very hard line where magenta meets the black where it tries to loop because what will happen is these colors will just these three colors will loop over and over again now where magenta meets the black you're gonna have a hard line unless you put magenta here on the end as well so now let's take a look at what all of that renders you can see we have a repeating radial gradient now the magenta turquoise and black just keep going now what if I didn't want so many rings in there what you can do is just make these smaller numbers basically if I make this a 30 this a 40 and this a 50 you can make these any numbers you want you gotta be careful because sometimes colors will overlap one another if you set these numbers in such a certain way to allow that so now let's see what we have so you can see there's not so many rings inside of our repeating gradient here let's make this 50 60 and 70 nope that has to be 60 you can see a little better how it's repeating through there and messing with these numbers will determine whether you have a lot of rings repeating in there or just a few okay let's show one more little quick example that will just make the one that we just made we'll turn that to gradient 9 here and in front of the colors let's make it circle shape instead of elliptical refresh the page so you can see the same ellipse here is a perfect circle here okay so using these examples it shows you how to position them size them so you can get the radial gradient to start anywhere you want within your element you can make the gradients any size you want any shape you want as many colors as you want in them and you can also make them repeating if you want and we already discussed having transparent colors here you can either use the transparent keyword to go full transparency or you can use RGBA color value or HSLA color values okay there's one more little tip I want to show you if you go up into the, the div and let's give that a border radius and this is where I think these radial gradients would come in most handy let's just say hundred percent basically make it circular check our page and refresh so you see what you have now if you make those perfectly circular you have a nice orb especially that first one shows you how to make a nice 3d shiny orb So you can make some cool round buttons or oval buttons and you can also use the ellipse gradients the ellipse keyword if you want to make sure it stays in ellipse to put these on you know like rounded rectangular buttons they would also look nice on rounded rectangular buttons I'm just going to remove this border radius here. Now I'll add all the prefixes for the other browsers. I'll just copy this whole background property, Control C, and I'll move this one down one line and make sure I move this closing curly brace down as well. So I've got WebKit, let's target Moz, that's Firefox, let's target MS, that's Internet Explorer, and O for Opera. Now the last one you want is no prefixes because this is the one that will come into play when all of the browsers use this setting and they don't rely on their prefixes any longer so when any of these browsers stop relying on this prefix this is the rule or this is the setting that's going to be applied and for instance uh, webkit when you use all of these together like this webkit this whole line isn't even going to be used in google chrome this one will be used in google chrome and you can check for yourself i think this already works in Google Chrome so if I remove all of these I should still see my background one in Google Chrome even without the prefix okay but for the time being you want to leave all those in there you got WebKit, MOS, MSO and then the standardized approach the normal approach I'm gonna do that same thing for gradients 1 through 9 and I'll also have all of this code available on the page of develop PHP where the video renders if any of you happen to have the need to copy and paste it. So this is what you should end up with. Okay, that wraps up linear and radial gradients in CSS3.